Welcome back to another episode of the Believe in NFL Draft Prospects podcast. Joe DeLeon, Ryan Roberts. We've got another positional breakdown that we're going to be doing. Top five defensive tackles for the 2023 NFL Draft, getting you ready for the NFL Draft. We're pretty much less than a month away, which is, Ryan, a little scary. It's a little <laughs> scary time. Scary hours. you got to get ready, Ryan. Are you ready? Ready for the NFL Draft? I'm not ready at all, Joe. I'm trying to put together a, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to put together a draft guide right now, man, of like oh. my, my linebacker evaluations for the year. And it is, uh, it's sneaking up on me pretty quick, man. It's awful. I, I got graphics being made, this being assembled. Like it's, it's a lot, man. It's a lot right now, but. March is a weird month for the cycle because you got March Madness going on and then you're thinking to yourself like, oh, we got all this time. And then March Madness ends, which it ends next weekend and it's the first week of April. And then you're like, oh, my God, it's only a few weeks away. So also this March Madness has been absolute chaos, which I feel like has been just grabbing my attention more. Like I didn't care. Very distracting. I didn't give two s's about bas- college basketball this year like i don't watch college Neither basketball especially when notre dame stinks at basketball i'm just like i don't care that much yeah but this march madness i have been watching a lot of these games and man this has been very entertaining like that little point guard from kansas state and florida atlantic making a run to the final four and princeton upsetting a team early on fairly dickinson upsetting a team early on like it's just been absolute chaos man absolute chaos Big big year for the state of New Jersey. Yes, Although man. we don't really we don't claim Princeton though. They're they're their own thing. What do you mean we don't claim uh, Princeton? Yeah, because um, everyone who goes to Princeton's not from New Jersey. And uh, those pretentious. I hate SOBs I hate are, schools that have good academics. I hate them so that's, much. That's not that's not true. I'm a big Notre Dame fan. What are you talking about yeah. over here, man? What do you do? You, you, you it's Rhode, just like you everyone Island, who goes though. to. But What's everyone who goes to Notre Dame, none of those people are from Indiana. When you talk about Notre sure. Dame, you don't talk about Indiana. You talk about Notre Dame. It's a national it's a brand, man. It's a national brand. Prince is a national brand, too. So there we go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> I don't know. It's I think it's one of the one of those Ivy Leagues that's not really like a like a regional, like, oh, it reps New Jersey. I, feel like I, I forgot. You're a North Jersey guy. You wouldn't understand here's about a good, South Jersey here, stuff, man. Here's a good example. That's Central yeah. Jersey. Here's a good example. It's not we'll Central. Get into our, There's no we're gonna, such We're going to get Central into our Jersey. defensive tackle discussion. Here's a really good example. I yeah. was out at a bar watching the second round games and, uh, y- you know, like typically like if, if somebody was wearing a fairly Dickinson shirt or something like that, or if somebody was wearing like a Rucker shirt, your first inclination would be asking, like, oh, are you from New Jersey? And I've had that happen out here and I've had conversations with people about being from New Jersey. Yeah. During the Princeton, Missouri game, this kid was wearing a Princeton sweatshirt. I'm like, oh, are you from New Jersey? And he was so like almost disinterested <laughs> by the fact that I ask him that question. He's like, no, I'm from here, but I went to Princeton. Like, that's what I don't F with. Like, that's what I don't like. So that's what I'm getting at here. We don't claim Princeton. I immediately was I, out on I them claim, after that interaction. I can claim Princeton. You can claim Fairly Dickinson if you, you want. You didn't I'll go to Princeton. Princeton. You can't claim Princeton. Princeton's like, not- a he- Princeton's like 25, 30 minutes from me right now. Stop I can claim Princeton. You can stay with Fairly Dickinson up in the North Jersey, okay. all right? Just stick there. You stick there. Uh, today we've got defensive tackles. We're going to go through our top fives. This might be one of the most divisive groups that we are going to discuss. I think there's going to be a pretty wide gap on where we agree. And we're going to start this off, Ryan, with a guy who I, I don't know how he ended up in my top five. I Uh don't know how this guy ended up in my top five, but then now that my list is done and we're here talking and I've watched enough guys that he fits into the top five. The reality of it is I really like this player. Zach Pickens from South Carolina ends up being my fifth-ranked defensive tackle. I feel like so many other outlets have him ranked as this day three pick, but maybe he's a sleeper for me. You know, I think that's the best way to put it. Zach Pickens, when I watched him early on in this cycle, I got a big, powerful kid. I think he's got some pass rush upside. He's got some good, active hands, which, again, don't get enough love. He, for me, is not somebody who is going to put up Uh, a massive stat line at the end of every single game. He is exactly what you want to clog up the, the, uh, any rush lanes to take up space, to hold guys down at the line of scrimmage. He's somebody that is not easily moved by double teams. I I think Zach Pickens deserves a little bit more love in this class and the very least should be in the top 10 for, for most people for these defensive tackles. I, I thought I was going to hate your – you kind of led, led it to being something that I absolutely hate, Joe. I don't, I don't hate that at all. Like I, I actually like Zach, a lot of what Zach Pickens brings to the, to the table. He didn't make my list. 
just because there was, you know, one guy specifically that is more of a, tra- a tra- you know, a, a transitional player moving inside type of thing. So, but I like Zach Pickens, man. I mean, you look at that profile, mm-hmm. six three and five eights, two 291 pounds was what he was at the combine, but we know that he's played heavier than that, obviously, at South Carolina. 34 and 3 inch arms, his incredible length, near 82 inch wingspan. Kid's a really gifted athlete, which is why he was a five star and ended up at South Carolina. Like this kid was a big time recruit. Yeah. Was kind of quiet early on in his career, but I feel like the last couple of years he really started to come into his own, come into his own. He's not a perfect prospect. I still think that he doesn't understand how to harness his power profile consistently, and he can kind of become a little bit stagnant at the point of attack at times when I think that he has more juice. I mean, he ran 4'8", 9", at 290-plus pounds at the combine. Like This kid is a really talented and gifted athlete. High upside, in my opinion. Well, good upside. Maybe not high yeah. upside is the right thing, but good upside to him. Decent floor, though, because I think at worst he's going to be able to play the point of attack. But people don't talk about him enough because I think that he just didn't have the gaudy stat lines because he was a player that was a little bit forgotten early in his career. But he developed over the last couple of years, man. I think he's going to be a good football player at the next level. So I don't have many qualms with that one at all. I really don't. Before we continue on with this video, I just want to tell you folks about an exciting new partnership that we have with this channel with underdog fantasy. Ever since I joined, I've been having so much fun. There are so many different exciting games that make watching games during the offseason more exciting. I'm not the biggest basketball fan, but it has made it way more entertaining since I found Underdog Fantasy. And my favorite game to play so far, which I think you should try out, is Pick'em. It is so easy to play. Just pick higher or lower on your favorite player stats, and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single night. Underdog keeps it simple. With their easy-to-use website and mobile apps, pick between two and five players to fill out your Pick'em slip Get every pick right and take home some cold, hard cash. Use code HACK, H-A-C-K, HACK, like the name of this channel. Use code HACK to get your first deposit doubled up to $100 by Underdog. Go sign up. You won't regret it. You're going to have a blast. Check out Underdog Fantasy. I also want to tell you folks about our other reoccurring sponsor that we have on this channel, that being Bet Online. BetOnline.ag, which has all the updated odds, news, and anything for sports betting. It's my go-to source for when I want to be betting specifically on games. I love betting on college basketball or the NBA, uh, especially, again, during the offseason. Always looking for more fun ways to be uh, focused in on some of these other sports. It's BetOnline.ag and use promo code BELIEVE50. It's promo code BELIEVE50 to get 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Yeah, I, I think his ceiling is just a, a space eating one tech again. Like, I don't like, think like a is... like a Linval Joseph type, maybe. Yes, maybe not yeah. quite as big, but yeah, yeah. They, they don't get a, a or a Dalvin Tomlinson type. Like That's those guys one. don't get a, a lot of love, but I mean, having a guy like that is is really important to set up the other guys. And look, here's the main takeaway: what I always look for, and we did it on the Edge Show, and I kept bringing up this word for defensive linemen for me disruption is really key and I saw that from Zach Pickens where he might not have been creating tackles for loss or a ton of sacks he can do it he's done it he did it against Clemson where he he made a bunch of really good plays but the disruption that you look for from a one tech is or even from a nose is just a guy who's not getting moved and is requiring multiple players to move him and when they try to double team him he's not creating any space so uh, I think Zach Pickens deserves deserves some love I know people are going to hate that in the comments Ryan, you're number five guy for the defensive tackle class. I have Adio Dubare from Northwestern as my number five defensive tackle in this class. And this was one, this is why the scouting process is so fascinating because when I originally watched him over the summer this past year, didn't love him. I didn't love him because he was at that point a 260 something pound edge. And honestly, if I plugged his great, if I graded him as fully an edge player in this class, he would be a day three football player in my opinion, right? Like mm. his film has some good in it. I mean, he's incredibly physical set in the edge. He's got that length. I mean, he's got 34 inch arms. I think he had a, yeah, 82 and one eighth inch wingspan at six foot one and five eighths, 282 pounds. So a very interesting and odd p- profile for a defensive end, which is why I ultimately think inside is better for him. But I'll be very honest, man, like kind of looking at that power profile and that quickness and now 280 plus pounds instead of playing 268 that he did during the season. That's interesting to me, man. It's interesting. So there is projection here, right? Mm-hmm. Like this isn't a, Adeo Dubois is going to be a stud. There's a, he's a no doubter. 
No, there's a transitional period that's going to happen because, yes, a team can play him in some five and still play him on the edge a little bit. But I think this kid is a tailor-made three-tech at the next level. Get another five to ten pounds on his frame. Get him up to about 287 pounds, 290 pounds, somewhere in that ballpark. I think we're cooking with grease, man. I mean, this kid ran 4-4-9 at the, at the 282 pounds of the combine, which is just one of the most absurd things that you're ever going to hear. Went to the Senior Bowl, dominated. Showed off his athleticism. I think that the upside is tremendous here. I have him as a day two football player inside on the interior. Now, I will say this, though, Joe. This is why rankings and projections are completely different animals because this kid, has, I think, has a chance to go in the late first round. I think it was either Mel Kuyper or Todd McShay. And I know we can say stuff about either guy as far as some of their evaluations sometimes, but there's no debate that both of those guys are plugged mm. in to this draft process. I think both those guys – have now had Ade Odeboire in a first-round mock over the last few weeks. So there is some smoke here, man. I think he has a chance to go in the first round. So Odeboire is the perfect example of a guy who tests really well, has a really good senior bowl, and you're like, okay, I need to go watch this kid. He's on my short list of players to watch. Yep. Maybe he slides his way into my top five. So he ends up being at six for me. Okay. All the testing physically is a freak athlete. You just talked about it. He's moving positions, so we can't really know for sure what he's going to be like at defensive tackle because he played edge primarily um, when he was at Northwestern. Right. Here's where I'm held up. His instincts are terrible. Like his instincts <laughs> are just not like I, I, I. He's not even a football player. He's an athlete out there. You know, like I'm watching. Well, his, well be, be specific though. His instincts at edge is what you're saying are terrible. Yeah. Right. Like that's well, what you're I saying. Just, Okay. I feel like a lot of times he's one of those guys that just gets caught up with his blocker and he's just, he's going at him. He's going at him. And then you're like, the ball just went past you, man. Like, what well, are you, that, what that are you happened, looking at? That happened at the senior bowl. Do you remember the rep yeah. where he absolutely just dis dis destroyed Jared Patterson and drove him through the end yep. zone? I'm like, wow, that's incredible power and incredible explosiveness. But like, why didn't he get off the block and finish the play? Like you just yes. drove the guy past the quarterback. Like he that's did that not... all the time. He did. Yeah. So he did that all the time. Like that's where I'm just like, Oh my God, this kid could be so good. This kid could be a, a top three edge in the class. And one of the things that I saw put out there into the NFL draft ether was why would I go with Kalaja Kansi when I can get audio to who's similar, but has way more length is more explosive. My pushback is that I, I consistently saw the disruption and the playmaking that Kalaja Kansi brought to the table. I, I just don't have evidence of that from Ottawa. I'm not saying he can't figure it out. He's a smart kid, clearly. He went to Northwestern. Sure. Um, but I just I need to see it before I can buy into him as a top five prospect. It's just such an apples to orange comparison, though, to a degree, because Kalaja Kansi wasn't playing on the edge, though. Like it would have been a right, that's why I didn't I didn't like yeah. the, that thrown out there. Gotcha, gotcha. It makes sense, man. I mean, look, I think this is a perfect transition, Joe, because we ju you just mentioned Kalaja Kansi. I know he's going to okay. be on your list somewhere. I yeah. put him at number four on my list, the defensive tackle out of Pittsburgh, because I am fully forthcoming. Mm -hmm. Kalaja Kansi has tremendous upside as an interior rusher and a one-gap penetrator. There is no doubt. My guy is cat quick. He came in a little bit taller than people originally um, anticipated. That some people thought that he might be even sub six foot. He came in at six foot and five eighths, so near six foot one, two hundred eighty one pounds. The trouble part for me, Joe, is that like yes, he's a tremendous athlete. Ran four six seven. I expected him to be a really good athlete though, because you see the quickness that he has off the snap. You see the penetration ability. That stuff's all great. My hang up with Kalaj Kansi though, and we've talked about this before. Just doesn't play at the point of attack very well, man. Like, mm. there's going to be some points where he just gets stuck on blocks and he gets displaced. Like, it's going to happen because it's not a lack of power profile. That's not what it is. A college case is actually very strong for his size. But at some point, we have to talk about the fact that he is 280 pounds and he's probably maxed out. Like, I could see Adeo de Boire, for instance, putting on another five to 10 pounds and that won't affect him much. He'll be able to carry that weight. Kalaja Kansi. I don't think you want to put too much more weight on that frame, man. I don't think that he has the frame that is suitable to carry 290, 295 pounds. So with him being a smaller guy, there's going to be some times where when you're anchoring against double teams against two guys that are 320 pounds each, you're going to get displaced a little bit, which I, I am willing to accept if we use him in the right role. An attack style 4-3 defense Dope. Like, let's get him in as a three tech and just let him shoot gaps. But even in that situation, there's going to be times where he has to anchor. There's going to be times. Mm. And that's where my 
hang up with him is. And I think that it's due to that 280 pound frame. But then the other part too, Joe, is the reason that I don't think he's great against the uh, great at the point of attack. And I was looking for his, yeah, here's his measurable is 30 and five eighth inch arms, man. That's very short, brother. That, I think he's in the one one percentile for arm length historically at defensive tackle. Like that is that is that tells me that translatable to the next level, he's probably never going to be a good run defender ever. I don't think he's ever going to be a good run defender. Could he be a good penetrator? Yeah, I think so. Could he brush the passer? Yes. But what is he going to give me on early downs and in situations where I know he has to be able to anchor? Like I just don't know if he has enough for me to be comfortable with him, especially in the. If you were talking about him going tenth overall now to the Philadelphia Eagles, I'm like, guys, yeah, that's a nah, little too man, spicy for nah. me. Like Nate, like I would be okay with him in the second or third round. I'd be very okay with that. I'd be like penetration style, scheme specific, role specific, cool. In that type of situation, though, t- going tenth overall, you got to play more than just pass rush downs, and in, in you know, in those situations where you know he is going to be his penetration style player, there's going to be some times where he's going to have to anchor, and I just don't think Kalaja can't see that type of dude. I think with Cansey, so I have him ranked higher than you do. I'll yeah. share that ranking in a second. But to continue this dialogue on him, the length thing does scare me a lot. Sure. This year's draft is a really weird draft for some measurables. That some guys like Bryce Young, Deuce Vaughn. Now we've got Kalaja Cansey, who doesn't fit that typical physical profile that we look for for defensive tackles. So like everything you said makes sense, but I I just I find it really difficult for me to not give this guy the credit for how explosive he is, how quick he is, how active his hands are. The problem is, is that as you're talking about here at the point of attack, he's very inconsistent. He gets, he gets bullied, but when he's able to rush the passer and when he's not in those situations where he's getting double teamed and he's one-on-one with, with these guards, he is too quick, too low to the ground too strong for how low to the ground he is to be stopped by a lot of these guys. I think that, again, disruption is the word that I'm going to continue to bring up on this show. The disruption level that he brings to the table is, it's silly. The stuff that he was able to do, the problems that he's able to cause against some of the top DR offensive linemen, rather, in college football, the guys that he faced off against, the things that he was able to do, it's it's special. But I get, I'm taking a little bit of a chance here is the way that I'm looking at this. I'm yes. taking a chance and hoping that all of that and him getting maybe 15 sacks in the NFL in a season, like him being that dominant. Oh, you think what, he's going to be that good? Wow. I think, but right. like, that's what I'm hoping for. He's, he was able to be that disruptive at, at pit. Like if he can be a 10 to 15 sack guy, if he's able to, to produce that, I'm willing to take that shot, but I don't know if it's worth that investment based on the fact that he can't really do much against the run. Like that's where I'm getting yeah. hung up. But I think that what he did at Pitt against the pass as a pass rusher is is scary good and there's a lot of potential there. Joe, uh I, I know that a lot of people watch us on YouTube, right? Yeah. So can I ask you to please if I could share something on the screen real quick? I have the access already. Yes, can I please yes, share it? Yes, okay. Ahead. This is the spider chart that Trevor Sikama at Tampa Bay Trey on Twitter shared of Kalijah Cansey Joe, and I thought it was just absolutely hysterical. Oh, I just the, want to show this yeah. real quick. They called it they called the negative pack man on his spider chart on mock draftable man. This is like one of the most fantastic things that I've ever seen in my entire life. For people that are watching on YouTube, basically he's in the zero or one percentile for basically everything across the board, height, weight, arms, arm length, and hand size. See, really tiny hands, by the way. I know Joe loves guys with, t- with small hands, so like that makes sense, right? <laughs> but then he's got a cr- – like it's a 99th percentile for the 40, and then his 10-yard split is the 95th, so he's just absolutely hysterical. So look up. If anybody is not watching YouTube, go to Kalijah – just type in the Google. Kalaja Kansi spider chart, and I believe that this is the first thing that pops up, and it's absolutely hysterical. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much for letting me share. Yes, you're welcome. Um, but Kalaja Kansi, though, we'll see what happens with him. I think he's very, yes. vol- very volatile prospect. That's the simplest way to describe him as a as a player. To move on to my number three guy that I have. Um, wait, no, it's technically my number four guy. Sorry, I have Keanu yes. Benton. I really am a lot higher on Keanu Benton than I was in the off season. I like Keanu Benton. Uh, I think that what you get with a player like this, first of all, massive ass. That's what we look for with defensive tackles. How big is their ass? Um, he is just so strong. 
And the flexibility is something that you don't, you kind of have to pay attention to. The one thing that I see too many people talking about on Twitter is that he's a nose tackle. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's strictly a nose tackle. I, I, I don't a, think he's a nose a tackle tech. at all, man. I, or, I, 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 a, I would say three tech or four, four eye in a three man front. Joe. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't think he's a nose tackle at all. Like, I think he can play it, but I, I think that was a, that was a necessity thing at Wisconsin. I do not think that's where he, I, I don't think that's where he projects best to, to your point. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people just watch the film and they go off that, that, that wording, but the traits that he has, the length, the power, and then again, that flexibility and hand speed, I, I really love it. The one thing that, and I kind of what I said during the off season, and the one thing that why I'm not like crazy high on him is that he is a little bit inconsistent, and I don't know if it's like a tired thing, a stamina thing. I know that he was hurt a little bit this year. It's just some snaps he does get driven off the ball, and he does get pushed back a little bit, and he disappears on plays. I want more snap-to-snap consistency, but when he's on, he's freaking on, and he's a big, massive dude that causes serious problems. And and another perfect transition, Joe. Perfect transition for me. He's number three. number Number three for me is Keanu Benton, man. I've been on this bandwagon since before the year. We know that the season was a little bit up and down, but then you obviously hear the injury stuff that he was dealing with is a little bit of the reason why that happens. Then he was the senior bowl, Joe, and I think that people are like, they're all mystified. They're like, oh my God, he can push the pocket? He can push the passer? It's just like, guys, he was played <laughs> as a zero tech at Wisconsin. How much p- penetration did you want him to play in that three-man front? Like That wasn't going to be a role that he assumed in college. But when you look at his body type, you look at at his athleticism. He tested pretty well. He actually tested well at the combine. My guy is 6'3", six, 6'8", six, so almost six foot four, three hundred nine pounds. Has thirty four inch arms, eighty one and three quarter inch uh, wingspan. Joe, so like this is a kid that I say could play in a four man front. He can play in a three man front. This is a three tech four four I. I think he can play some two and two I if you wanted him to do that as well. I do not think this is a true nose at the next level. I do not believe that. I think that this kid can create penetration, but at worst, man, the baseline of what Wisconsin asked me to do, though, is that my guy is going to be able to play against the run and going to be able to play the point of attack. Former mm. wrestler, has very strong mitts on him, good athlete. I just think that he has, he has untapped upside. Like I think that some people think of him as a high floor player. I disagree. I think he's a high floor player, but usually when you talk about high floor players, that means that their ceiling is lower, right? That's kind of how you quantify guys. I don't agree with that at all. I think in a system that asks him to do more as a penetration style player, we have only seen the, the 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 just very small showings of what Keanu Benton could be as a penetration style player, man. I want him to be in a little bit of an attack style defense so you can really start seeing what his overall potential as a penetrator, penetrator is because I think that that's something that Wisconsin just did not ask him to do. And no shade against Wisconsin. Jim Leonard put had put out consistently good defenses Every single year. It worked for him, but I don't think it worked for Keanu in the sense of projecting what he would do best in the NFL. Mm-hmm. I don't think we saw the best of that yet. Yeah, I, I think that Keanu Benton deserves more love, and I think he could possibly be a, a late first round, if not a very, very early second round pick based on uh, the things that he brings to the table. And I, I hope that what he did at the Senior Bowl brings a little bit more light to what he's capable of doing. Another guy who, again, yeah. the defensive tackle class, the guys at the top, the, the guys in the back end aren't, aren't that great. There's not a ton of talent. We've kind of talked about this. But the guys at the top, I think, get knocked for some reason. And one of those guys that does get knocked is Brian Brzee, who a lot of people are like, well, why would he go in the top 15? Uh, Brian Brzee was a former top recruit for a reason. And he was fully yes. healthy this year. He was fully ready to go. Didn't have any injuries like he's had in the past. The, Wait, he's your number three? He's your number three? He's my number three. Stupid, okay, sure stupid that. power that he brings to the position. His bull rush is scary of what he's capable of doing. I think that you've got some pretty good pass rush upside uh, as a defensive tackle. He also showed an ability to play all along the defensive line. So if you want to bump him around in various shades, he can do it. He's got the frame to do it. He's got the flexibility to do it. Very good athlete, though. Like That's where you get with a Brian Brzee who is consistently disruptive. You also have the athleticism, which is going to make him a potentially highly draftable kid uh, in this defensive tackle class. Another guy, again, don't want to overthink him. Solid, well rounded. This is a Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne type of a guy. I, for some reason, keep seeing him mocked at the Commanders. It's probably not going to happen because of how many defensive tackles they've drafted in the past five years in the first round. <laughs> and, and they just gave Deron Payne the bag yes. this offseason, didn't they? So, but he gives yeah. me those vibes in terms of the type of player that he is. 
He's another player that is nowhere near his upside because we've talked about it, right? Durability issues, you know, in 2021, 2022, missed a, a game or two, but also I think that he just mentally was not all the, way, all the way there, obviously dealing with the death of his little sister. Like, it's he's been through the ringer the last two years, man. But this kid, Joe, six foot five. Five eighths, two hundred ninety eight pounds. You saw him at the combine, man. You're like, there's no bad weight on that frame, man. He's just like a massive dude. Ran like four eight something in the forty. The talent is immense, but we have to, <coughs> excuse me, we have to be forthcoming on this one. That this is a projection here, right? We have not seen the best of Brian Brissy. We have not nearly seen him hit a ceiling. But the other thing to consider here, with the missed time. Is also according to the Rise and Draft uh, Rise and Draft database prospect database, Joe Brian Brissy is the youngest interior defensive lineman in the 2023 NFL Draft. So he is not close to that ceiling. Mm. He needs development. He needs to be with a good coach in a good defensive line room. There's no doubt. But if you get his head straight, focused, keep him healthy. I think this kid has superstar potential, man. I, I said it in the preseason, and it, it never became got to the fruition because it, of everything that he was dealing with. But there are elements of his game that scream to me in Dominican Sue. Like I see that type of upside to him. Will he ever be that player? Not sure because he has missed some developmental time. But from a talent perspective, this kid's got the goods, man. And he's my number two on the list because I think that he has everything you need to be a dominant force on the next level. It's just about staying healthy and staying consistent. So who the, who's your number three? Does, number three was Benton. Oh, okay. So now we're up to number two. So Brian Brzee is your number yes. two? You transitioned me up to number two. Got it. Talking okay, about, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So sometimes yeah. I get lost in our our, our run through. When it, when it works out that way, it's hard to keep track of stop, where everyone is. Stop watching ESPN, man. Stop watching ESPN. What? Are you talking about the thing that's, so. going, that's going on in the background? <laughs> I put yes, the 2005 yes. NFL draft for anyone who was wondering. Oh, nice. You know what we should do? Here's a, here's a fun little bit that I'm going to add. I'm going to do a different oh. year draft every time we tape. Uh, every, uh-huh. so in the comments, I want people to guess which draft class it is. So tomorrow, or not, which draft year it is. So next time we do a show, I'm going to use a different one, and I want everyone to guess okay. which which year it is. There was a there was a picture of Aaron Rodgers in the background, so that was the the telling uh, the telling giveaway. But um, yes, we've already talked about Kalaja Kansi, who's my number two. Again, I think that yep. if you hit that ceiling, fantastic pass rusher. I don't totally know if that's realistically possible. Very, very low floor. Extremely low floor. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> Our number one guy, though. We both have yes. Jalen Carter, obviously. Yes. I don't want to sit here and, and debate the where the heck does he go after the pro day situation, after the arrest situation. We've already talked about that twice. We've done two shows on Jalen Carter because of the off-the-field issues. This guy, though, talent-wise, is a top-two pick. He is that freaking good. He has every capability, athletic trait, to be a snap-to-snap dominant player in the NFL, to be a defensive rookie of the year type of player that is constantly causing problems for offensive lines. He is one of the only guys that I've ever seen take on a double team, and while taking on a double team, use his other arm to grab a running back and take him down at the line of scrimmage. (laughs) I have never seen something like that in my life. That's not supposed to happen, guys. Normally, those guys get double teamed. They create congestion, and a linebacker comes down. This kid is special, and his traits are ridiculous. And I am hoping, I'm praying that Jalen Carter figures it out off the field. I am hoping, if if he's an Atlanta Falcon, that might be horrible for his career because he's going to be close to where he went to school. Get him in Seattle. You know, send him somewhere as far away as possible where he's away from everything, where there's a a city where there's nothing going on and he can just focus on football. If he's a Seattle Seahawk man, dude, that's going to be frightening playing in that defense with how good we know that he is. And I'm really rooting for him to end up on a a team like that. Man, he is, in my opinion, he's the best player in this draft. He's the best player in the 2023 NFL draft. I think that the two elite prospects. You have him above Will Anderson? On film, yeah, yeah, I, th- I think that he, I-, I think that his, his potential impact at the next level is even higher than Will Anderson's, and I love Will. Wow. They're, they're two blue chip players, in my opinion, in this class. Jalen Carter, Joe, I, I keep going back to it, man. 
This kid is just like Warren Sapp reincarnate on the field, man. Like that's just what he is, in my opinion. Like six three and an eighth, three hundred fourteen pounds, thirty three and a half inch arms. He's got kind of that really dense, stocky frame, though, where you're just like, you expect him to just kind of be a, a butt kicker at the point of attack, but then he just has this like penetration ability and this god given strength and just this. It's it's impressive to watch, man. He's got every tool in the toolbox to be. I'll say it like this, right? Aaron Donald is kind of probably nearing the end of his career a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, like he got injured this past year. And obviously he's been a great football player. One, you know, maybe the best defensive tackle of all time. He's in the conversation, in my opinion, that, that being Aaron Donald. But that next wave, man, the Chris Joneses of the world and the Jeffrey Simmons and like those guys that are now coming up the pipe. Over the next couple of years, if Jalen Carter has his head on straight, and he gets in a good situation, he could be in that contention, in that conversation very quickly in his career, in my opinion, man. He has elite written all over him. He has special traits. He can be a one-gap penetrator. He can be a two-gap run defender. He can do anything that you need him to do on a football field. Obviously, there's the off-the-field questions that people need to answer. But if it's heads on straight, man, and you're comfortable with him, my kid is special. He's a special football player. It's just all about being comfortable with him off the field. And I don't have the answer to those questions, but I sure hope for his sake that he's got it going in the right direction because he is a incredible talent at the defensive tackle position. We're all rooting for Jalen Carter. Hopefully uh, everything gets figured out with him. Well, un- un- unless he did something terrible. And then in that case, then I'm not. Well, it doesn't, him, but yeah, it doesn't I, seem like he did. And I just, I th- it, the, my takeaway with Jalen Carter is that he's just, he's a really immature. He's really immature. And yeah. we all know, and like I played with guys that were like Jalen that just always were doing stupid things. And I know that one yeah. of the things he was near led to just a very catastrophic ending, but like he's he's gotta go somewhere where there's where he can be distracted and he's or not not distracted and just it's all football. You know, I'm like a yeah. city where there's just not much going on and he's just playing football every single day and he's focused on football. But we're rooting for Jalen Carter. Thank you for tuning in, folks. Comment below which of these top five guys you want on your NFL team. Let us know in the comments. We want to hear it. Who are you excited about in the NFL? Maybe if we miss somebody that you think is a sleeper or you deserve, you think deserves some credit, comment it below. We want to know. At Joe DeLeon, at Rise and Draft. We'll be back with more, folks. Enjoy the rest of your week.